In this video, I'm checking out the last of the three strange lenses sent to me by Yasuhara. This one is called the Madoka 180, and it is a 180 degree circular fisheye lens for your Sony APS-C mirrorless camera. And what's interesting about this one is I was reading online about it, and it looks like it was released something like seven years ago. There aren't a whole lot of reviews about this little lens, so I'm interested to check it out. So let's take a closer look. The Madoka 180 comes in a small red box. There's not much to the packaging. It's just a lens and two lens caps. The rear lens cap is pretty simple, made out of plastic. And the front lens cap is very small. It has some branding and it just kind of tension fits on the front of the lens. So here is the lens. This is a 7.3 millimeter circular fisheye, so ultra, ultra wide. It gives you a 180 degree field of view. Now the lens itself feels good in the hand. It's made out of metal or aluminum. The mount around the back is metal construction, no electronic connections because this is a full manual lens. Moving towards the front, you'll see there is an aperture control ring. It moves from f4 to f22. Unfortunately, the mechanism on the aperture control is both imprecise and cheap feeling and cheap sounding. Moving forward to the focus ring, which is just a little further forward. It's also a touch smaller than the aperture control. The rotation on this is very small. So you go from 0.1 of a meter over to infinity. The focus ring is well damped and feels nice in the hand even though you're only rotating it about two centimeters from left to right. At the very front of the lens you have a very skinny looking barrel. The front lens element does bow out ever so slightly. Looking head on to this lens there is some writing on it Yasuhara Madoka 180 4 slash 7.3 for the focal length. And then as you rotate it, there is a number on it. Overall, this lens is built well and feels good in the hand apart from the aperture control, which again is just overly cheap. Mounting this lens on my a6100, the finish matches wonderfully. And you can see just how compact this fisheye lens is. It really does not take up any extra space in your camera bag. Now I've had this lens for several weeks now and I've taken a number of sample photos with it. So let's take a look at those. All of these are done on my Sony a6100 handheld, no color correction or any processing whatsoever. There might be a couple of videos mixed in here as well. Ready, set, go. That is it for the sample photos and videos. What can I say? It's definitely a unique look. Now, circular fish eyes all look a little bit different uh, because you are not getting a picture throughout the entire frame. So you're just getting that center circle. With this lens, I did notice a number of positives and a few negatives as well. So I'm just gonna quickly go through those. As far as positives, in the center of the frame, when you nail focus, which isn't always the easiest with subjects very close to the lens. The image is relatively sharp. It's actually pretty decently sharp, even around the edges where a lot of circular fisheye lenses kind of fall apart. This one still retains a good level of sharpness, which is a good thing. I also noticed this lens does a good job with controlling flaring. The flaring looks artsy and cinematic, which is a positive. Now, as far as negatives, Unfortunately, there are a couple. As you may have noticed in the samples, around the very edges or around the circle, 
well, you get a lot of light bleeding. You can correct this in Photoshop or another photo editing software, but it's just an extra step that's unfortunately something that you have to take. Now, another thing that I noticed around the edges is there is a bit of chromatic aberration, which again is a normal thing for circular fisheye lenses. I've seen this in the past numerous times. In addition to that, you may have noticed there was an ever so slight crop to the top and bottom of that circle. So in fact, the image that you're getting is not a complete circle. It's kind of like a circle with a little bit of the top and a little bit of the bottom chopped off. Now, when you mount this lens on a full frame Sony mirrorless camera, obviously that is not a problem, but I tried it on my Sony a7 and the image that you get is just way too small. And the last negative with this lens is unfortunately the price. It is $200, which is relatively inexpensive for a circular fisheye, but it's a seven year old lens at this point. And there are a lot of other competitors out there. In fact, Laowa has an even wider circular fisheye lens out that costs the exact same amount of money. All in all, this was an interesting lens to use, not personally one of my favorites, and certainly not one that I would recommend to the majority of you guys. There are a few of you out there, undoubtedly, that would find some sort of use to having a lens like this, who enjoy shooting with circular fisheyes. I, to be honest, am not the biggest fan of circular fisheye lenses, or even fisheye lenses in general, uh, but, it is an interesting lens, so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that review and found it useful and helpful. Again, special thank you to Yasuhara for mailing this lens out to me for review. Uh, as always, I'll post links down in the description below where you guys can check out more info, specs, pricing, and if you choose to buy this lens, you can do so by using the links down below as well. Thank you guys so much for all of your likes, all of your comments, and your support. Stay tuned for more, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.